Welcome to Messiah United Methodist Church. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Risen indeed. What a wonderful, sunny, springy Easter day to celebrate. We're glad to be here. We're glad to see so many of you in the sanctuary. We're glad to have some of you joining us online in our live stream. We're glad to be worshiping together. I want to welcome you. We have a couple announcements next weekend on a Friday and Saturday. We are going to be building two houses together with our churches, Methodist churches in this area. We will be at Bethel Hill United Methodist Church on Skipback Pike, uh, constructing two houses in the parking lot. These are modular homes for Habitat, and they're going to be going to Berks County. And uh, Saturday is the uh, day that you can go and hammer and assemble these houses. The sign-up, uh, the uh, information is on a board in the hallway by my office. You can see that, and you can register by calling the Bethel Hill office. Next Sunday, I will be away, and Reverend David Tackenhorst will be our guest preacher. David was my pastor in West Philly so many years ago and recently retired from 27 years pastor at St. Luke United Methodist Church in Bryn Mawr. A wonderful message about Thomas, the believer, who doubted and then believed. You can identify with that, many of us. Let's begin our worship. Please rise as Nancy leads us in our call to worship. We went to the tomb, but the tomb was empty. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen from, from the, the grave. grave. 
We witness to suffering. We who have been through so much. I love by a God who has shared in all that and more. He fell like us, but he did not stay down. He has risen. And together we will rise with him. Our first hymn, opening hymn this morning is number 306 in the red hymnal. The strife is over, the battle won. together as we uh, pray our opening prayer printed in the hymnal and on the screens. The strife is over, the battle is won. Spring has risen in the land and winter recedes. For another crown will make a full cast. We awake this morning to flowers inside our sanctuary and expectation in our hearts. Open our eyes of the mind to the newness of your creation. Strengthen our hearts, O Christ, that we might trust your new life within our own. Flow in and through us, bright Holy Spirit, that with every word and every breath we might give voice to your power and possibility. Glory to God in the Adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your 
Will the children come forward for the children's time? Good morning. Happy Easter. All right. You can stay there if you want to, but if you want to come a little bit closer, it might be easier to see the pictures because I'm going to read a book this morning. I have a book. It's called Twas the Morning of Easter. And it is poetry and it is a story and it kind of has the same kind of feel as a different story. I wonder if, after we read a little bit, you'll recognize. Twas the morning, not twas the night, twas the morning of Easter. Twas the morning of Easter, before the sun rose, two guards on a hillside were trying to doze. You see, Jesus had died only three days before. A huge stone had been placed to seal the cave door. Oh, this is the scary, sad part of the story. It's not going to be sad for long. The disciples were sleeping but tossed in their beds as visions of danger swirled round in their heads. Would they be arrested and led away too? Without Jesus, their leader, what would they do? In her small, quiet home, not too far away, Jesus' friend Mary was planning the day. She would go to the cave with perfume and spice and hope that her gifts would make Jesus smell nice. Do you recognize the feel of this? Twas the morning before Easter. Sounds like twas the night before Christmas. It has the same feeling of the poetry, doesn't it? Yeah, so this Easter is modeled on Christmas. All right, but this is the Easter story. So she's going to go, but there's a big stone in front of the tomb. And there's guards. What's she going to do? The sun through the trees was just starting to peep at the guards on the hill who were now fast asleep when all of a sudden there came an earthquake and the rocks and the trees all started to shake. Whoa! The guards jumped in fright then fell straight to the floor as the stone rolled away and unsealed the door. Then Mary arrived and crept up to the cave. She had to see Jesus. She had to be brave. But the cave was now empty. He just wasn't there. Mary sat down and wept, and her cries filled the air. But suddenly Mary heard someone behind. Dear woman, who is it that you hope to find? There she is. Mary jumped and turned round, so confused and afraid. Was this man the gardener, and why had he stayed? But the, clink, the calm in his voice, the words that he said, soon let Mary know she had nothing to dread. Do you think you're right? Yeah. Dear Mary, it's me, it's Jesus, your friend. My story's just starting, this wasn't the end. His eyes, how they twinkled, his smile so bright. Mary knew in a moment, but could she be right? She gasped in surprise and cried, Jesus, it's you. You came back to life. Your promise came true. Jesus nodded and said, But there's no time to lose. You must tell the disciples. Go spread the good news. So she jumped to her feet, and away Mary went. She had a story to tell, a tale heaven sent. She ran without stopping and called to the door, Disciples, you've never heard this news before. Now Peter, now James, now Thomas, now John. I went to the cave. Jesus' body was gone. But he called me by name. He's alive. It is true. It's a miracle only our great God could do. Whoa, look at that. 
look at that. So beautiful. Then the trees seemed to dance, birds started to sing. All creation joined in to worship the king. He's alive, he's alive. The rocks cried in praise. The whole earth rejoiced on this day of all days. When later that night Mary knelt down to pray, she thought about all that had happened that day, and the stars heard her wish, wish, whisper through soft evening light, Happy Easter to all, and to all a good night. And it ends just like the other one does, doesn't it? Yeah. Isn't that a neat story? I like that. Nice story. Reading of the Easter story in the poetry. So Jesus died, but on Easter he rose again so that we can live and we can live forever with God and with Jesus. We have new life just like Jesus. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to love us and show us how to love. Thank you that Jesus did not stay dead, but rose again. Amen. Thanks for coming up for Easter. The Easter story this morning comes to us from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Please rise for the reading of the good news. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message to you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Thanks be to God for the reading of this good news. Amen. What would happen if the Son of God rose from the dead and no one came to see? That was the question that stuck in my mind this year as I looked at the text to prepare for this Easter. Every year we read the story. Every year we worship together. Every year I try to find a new angle to tell the story and to look at it from a new perspective. Each gospel is a little different, but they all start with the women going to the tomb. After the Sabbath, the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. The focus at the beginning of the story is not on Jesus. In fact, the first proclamation is, He is not here. Jesus himself does not appear in the story until the end. What would have happened 
if Jesus had been raised in the night, as we suppose it happened, and the women had not gone to the tomb? What would have happened if they had not seen it empty, had not seen the angel, had not been greeted, or turned to go home and been greeted by Jesus himself? What would have happened if the women had not gone? They went with spices and oils to care for the body and prepare it for its final burial. The body had been laid quickly in a tomb on Friday as the tradition was, sealed in a cave, laid there before sundown on the Sabbath, as was the custom. But the final preparations for the long burial had not been made. The traditional preparations had not been done. So they went to care for him and to do what they could. They had no idea who would roll away the heavy stone. They knew it was bigger than the two of them could manage on their own. They had no idea how they would be received by the Roman guards who were there guarding the tomb. Soldiers, not inclined to let strangers pass and meddle in what has sealed away, dead and gone. They might be turned away. They might not even be able to get in, and yet they went. Even though it was hard, even though it was frightening, even though they didn't know how they would do it. They'd rather not go. It would be easier to stay in the upper room where it was safe. But they went because it was the right thing to do. If these women had never gone, would the story still be told? It's hard to imagine that God would raise God's son from the dead, would have done all this, and no one would have noticed. Surely God would have found a way. But that's the point, isn't it? The good news of Jesus' resurrection is entrusted by God to Mary and Mary. The apostles themselves did not go, at least not at first. They were still hiding together in the upper room. They were still fearing for their lives. It was the bravery of Mary Magdalene and the other Mary that Mark's gospel tells us was the mother of John. God brings new life out of death. God reveals new possibilities when we thought all doors were closed. Again and again, God has done it. But God always does it through the lives and the faithful witness and work of normal people. God called Abraham and Sarah to go. They left the land that they were familiar with. They left their home. And God created a people out of no people, a covenant people, a chosen people. But first, Abraham and Sarah had to trust and go where God promised to lead them. God saved Jacob and his sons from famine and starvation through the troubles and travels of Joseph. And at the end of the story, Joseph turns to his brothers and says, All that you did, all that you meant for evil, God has turned for good. God saved the Hebrew people from slavery in Egypt through the stammering words of Moses, with a little help from Aaron, his brother, and Miriam, his sister. God sent Jesus to love and heal and teach and show the way of God, and then entrusted the message to Mary and to Mary, who shared it with the apostles, who shared it with others, so that the whole world might know this good news. If the Easter story was not told, If the world did not know that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, then it would appear that death had had the final word. That the powers that crucified Jesus, that attacked God, that tried to silence love, would have won. When we look out on our world, it sometimes seems like a world without Easter, doesn't it? We are in some ways surrounded by death. We seem sometimes so overcome by sin, so intimidated by violence, hatred, division. But we know that is not all there is. 
We know that despite what things sometimes look like, we know that God is always at work in our lives and in our world to bring resurrection and new life. Our job as Christians is not to create the miracle. Sometimes we get confused and think it all depends on us, like needing to do the work of resurrection and make uh, uh, God come alive, make things happen, change things around. But the truth is that God has already done it. In raising Christ from the dead, God has reconciled us to God and one another. God has transformed the world forever. God has brought new life. Our job is simply to show up and to give witness to it. In so many ways, as people who follow Jesus, our job is to gather together, to share in our words and in our actions and in the way we live our lives that Christ is alive in our world and in our lives. And others, we hope, can see that in us. We gather this morning to tell the story again, one more time, to celebrate Easter together with Jesus' people across the world and proclaim that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. It is not our doing. It is God's doing. It's God's great gift for humanity. But it is our joy. It is our duty. It is our burden. It is our wonderful passion to tell this good news and share it wherever we go. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Let us join together to stand and sing the Easter hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today.
may be seated. At this time, I'd like to ask the ushers to come forward. We have so much to be thankful for. Christ died so we could be free of our burden of sin. So we offer back to God a little bit of our blessings that he may use them for his needs in our world.
greatest gift of all was the one that you gave to us. Your son Jesus, who died to keep us free from sin. We thank you, we love you, and please accept these gifts to use as you feel fit. Amen. You may be seated. We have several prayer concerns to be shared in our prayer time today. Justin Greenhow asks for prayers for Aunt Karen. Her lupus has become debilitating. And you can pray for pain relief and a more positive attitude through her challenges. And Justin also asks prayers for his grandmother, Justin, uh, jo Joan Okins, who was recently accepted into Gwynedd Rehab and long-term care. And there she is much more active and a family glad she has that constant, reliable care. Sandy Smith asks for prayers for Tracy Jackson, who is being treated for ovarian cancer. Joe Mears asks for prayers for Dave Pennypacker, who has been diagnosed with cancer and has third surgery Thursday. We also have prayers for the Lee Park family, who are dealing with multiple losses and medical complications. Let us go to God in prayer. God, on this day, we sing and dance. This day we laugh and are not afraid to smile. Because through it all, you have been with us and you have shown us that you are greater. That love is greater than hate that life is stronger than death, that goodness is stronger than evil, that you have overcome the grave, you have overcome sin, that nothing in life or in death is able to separate us from your great love, our risen Lord. We come to you with prayer, with prayers for the Leapheart family, dealing with losses and medical complications. We pray for Dave Pennypacker, diagnosed with cancer and facing surgery, and also for his family. <coughs> we pray for Tracy Jackson, her treatments for ovarian cancer, for her family and for the doctors working with her. For Joan, uh, in wedded rehab, for her caregivers and for her family. For Karen, for her lupus and for her state of mind, oh God, and for her family as well. We lay all these concerns before you, along with those on our prayer list and those we mention in our hearts in prayer today. God, let us never cease to give you thanks and praise. We give you thanks for the healing we have experienced. We give you thanks for the comfort that you give us, even in the midst of grief. We give you thanks for this bright and beautiful day, for the trees that are budding and the flowers that are blooming all around us, for a new life which continues to spring in the earth and new possibilities in our lives. We thank you for the turning of seasons in this congregation, for a new pastor and new start this summer. We thank you for gathering us together, for being together at breakfast and in worship, fellowship with friends we love to see, with family, with new friends, and greeting new people. God, you are always making all things new. Help us to be open. Help our ears to be open to hear your good news. Our eyes to be open to see the signs of new life all around us. Our hearts to be open to lift our spirits with your spirit singing through us. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord, with the words he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us rise one more time as a Easter people to sing our final hymn, Christ is Alive. Joy, justice, love, and praise. May these be yours as you go forward on this Easter day and every day. Go with the love of God, the grace of our risen Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim that Christ is alive. Amen.